Okay, guys, we'll come back. Now let's take a look at the transaction. What do you mean by the transaction? Transaction is a single unit of work that consists one or more operations. So it's like sequence of queries, operations, mainly modify the data, insert X, the data update, the data, etc. And we're going to have to use them or consider them as a single unit of work. The classical example of the transaction is a bank transfer from one account to another account. For example, assume that you need to transfer money from account A to B. So you're going to ask the account A balance, right? Then after that, say, minus $100, for example, you need to transfer $100 from account A to account B, yeah? Minus equal. Then after that, the second operation, you need to ask the account B, then add $100, all right? That's the transaction. The other operation, two operation, must be executed as one unit. So that means we cannot break it down. Either it can be executed as one unit or none at all. That's the meaning here. Okay, how could you specify that? How could you tell the database management system or the query that you have when you write your query from this point to up to this point, this is one unit. Is either excuse one as one unit or none at all. So in this case, generally speaking, the SQL standard allow you in order to define, let's say, a transaction or block of data. You can specify, for example, begin transaction, transaction, I'm gonna use transaction, for example. Then after that, you can list your command here. Then after that, you're gonna say either commit or roll back. So it give you two options. Sometimes you're gonna perform many operations, yeah? Then after that, maybe in the middle, one operation is valid because you take one value, then divide by another value, and end up divide by zero, for example. Or you violate something. So you're gonna say, no, 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 no. Whatever I did from here to here, I need to undo or undone. Ignore. What does that mean? I'm not gonna make it permanent. This means you are not gonna reflect the change to the disk. So if you said begin transaction, you perform many queries, then after that you said roll back. That means it looks like this command or whatever you execute in this transaction is is never happened. Okay. Or if you said commit, that means you have to reflect or make sure this one that can be permanent. Any change or update or modification being the set of commands you require, it's going to be permanent, okay? So this part of the transaction, it's going to be another file, it's called transaction, it's easy, okay? And this is, I mean, the reference, by the way, this is one great resource, they have many details about the postcards, even after the class, if you want to learn, please go to this website, this is one perfect, excellent website. Anyway, assume that we're going to create a table, okay? And this table is going to contain some data. Just speaking, when you create the data, well, that, by the way, that's what I want from you on the face tool. Give me something like this, create tables. Then this table is going to have some sample data. When you say sample data, maybe give me three, four, five. Well, not 100. At least you have sample data because when you try to test your data, you must have some previous data going to be inserted there, right? So anyway, so in this case, you have, for example, uh, drop, I'm going to uh, drop table if exists. One nice command we can use. If the data has exist before, or this table deleted, then after that, if it's there, and create it from again. I do this one because it might be I work with this one before, so I need to make sure that all every time I'm gonna have a fresh copy. Okay? I create this one, and this me, I'm going to insert one table there. This one contains what? The ID, contains the name, have the balance, and the primary key is uh, going to be the ID. Here we have one interesting thing. We see that the ID integer, and we have it generated by default as identity. What does that mean here? That's one interesting thing in the poster guess, okay? This allow us in order to perform what here? And allow us to, to in, you say, introduce or perform or add a new constraint is called generated, okay, by uh, default here. As identity. This allows us in order to automatically assign a unique number to a column. So automatically, when you try to insert the data here, there is no need to give me the values of the ID. The system will automatically say the ID equal one, then two, then three. Every time you perform a session, automatically be increment by whatever you can specify that you increment increment here. Okay? So here by default it will be plus by one. Okay? So generated by default. So when you say generated by default, it, it's similar to the serial, it's sequence, okay? This, based on the sequence standard, they use a serial here. With one column, you can carry this one, because I need to use this one in order to uniquely identify every single tuple there. Of course, someone is going to say, 
What if I have unique ID? Just use that one. Otherwise, you can use this one as it generates by default. So there is no need to come up with this unique ID in order to identify every single tuple of your relation and use this one as a binary key. Now, when you use generated by default as identity, when you try to insert this one or modify it, you say, uh, perform insert a new tuple, this relation, you are not, uh, there is no need in order to specify the value of the ID. Because the system said generated by default as identity. If you say generated by default, that means the system is going to do what here? By default, that means allow, it depends on you, by the way. Actually, we have two things. We have generated or uh, almost or generated by default. If you said generated almost, that means in this case, you are telling the postgres always generate the value for this identity column. If someone tried to insert or update this value in the generated column, because if you call this one generated almost as identity, so Postgres is going to give me other issue and error. Here we said generated by default. I didn't say uh, almost. I said by default. So the system allow you is if you provide me with the unique value for the ID, I'm going to assign, take it fine. If not, I'm going to automatically add one. Okay. And here you can have like uh, add sequence option. After the identity. Here it's gonna be increment by start with one, and every time it's gonna be increment by one. You can specify, you can tell, you can say, for example, I start with two or with one, increment by two. So the first one will be one, the second one gonna be three, the third one gonna be five, and etc. Okay. Anyway, back to the uh, the what we try to do with the transaction here. Okay, define this one as a transaction. Then after that, let's make this one wider a little bit. Then I insert, did I execute this one? Yeah, I execute this one. Yeah, you do this one again, it doesn't hurt. Yeah, uh, insert one zero one. That means we have a tuple here. Okay, give me the result here. What's gonna happen? Do you have what do you have in this account? And this account contains this information. I have only one, and automatically, I didn't specify the value here. The system automatically add one here. Good, assume that I'm going to perform transaction. Okay, and this is transaction. I'm going to say begin, by the way, it depends on the, whatever database management system I'm going to use, uh, work with, okay? So, so most of them are going to say begin, some of them require for you to say begin transaction. So I said this is transaction, I said begin, semicolon. Then I need to insert a, a new value, okay, to the account, to the name and balance, and the value of Alice and 10,000. I need to insert a new tool, okay? And here I'm going to show you, and um, I didn't specify all back or let's say commit. So I said begin, and they're on. I create, by, open by the way, by the way, a new query too, okay? I need to make this one in the new or fresh one. When you run this one, you see that? Oh, within this session of this area, I didn't say commit. So the system going to, right now, yes, I'm going to insert this one, and everything is fine. If you try to close this, okay? I'm not going to save it. Then after that, the system is going to say, okay, you more made modification to the database. Do you want it to reflect the change, commit or roll back? Commit, this means, yes, store this one to the disk. Roll back, this means, ignore. Okay? So if I get back to the transaction, let me try to execute this one again and see what's going to happen. Oh, where is Alice? It's gone. Because I said, roll back. Okay, if I'm gonna do this one again, okay, I'm gonna begin and I'm gonna say commit here. And let me show you how to get away from that. And let's do this one here. Begin, insert, do many commit, by the way, many, it's not only inside, many, do many modification, whatever you want. Then at the end, said, you're gonna say commit. When you perform that, the system gonna successfully run, everything's fine. Then after that, by the way, when you run more than one command here, the system only gonna show you the final command, the, I mean, the result of the final one. That means it can now do insertion. Then after that, commit with the last one that can, I can see here. You are not gonna see, for example, insert zero one because it's gonna override by the commit. Let me run this one, see the quantity. Oh, what do you have here? Oh, they have Bob and Alice. You notice here something. The ID is supposed to be two, yeah? Why is it three? Because remember, when you try to insert Alice one time, okay, and you said roll back, the system internally said, I assign the ID, I had this one by one, now two, I insert tuple, but the user 
said, no, don't reflect this one to the change, to the disk. When you try to insert another one or uh, another tuple, now the value is not going to be two, it's going to be three. Okay? Because two is used, although we don't reflect the change here. We have another way we can use in order to organize our data. We're going to talk about this one later. But right now, the data manager seems to be, we have some missing tuple, I mean missing values, so the ID is not going to have like a sequence, one, two, three, because two is gone. So if you try to insert, for example, multiple times, and every time you said, uh, roll back, roll back, the system keeping increment by one, okay? Okay, now assume that you do what? I need to do transaction. Transaction gonna perform this operation. I'm gonna take, for example, what? $1,000 from account A, then after that, for example, uh, oh, you're gonna have uh, $1,000, oh, we have $10,000, okay, we have a lot of money. Take $1,000 from account A, and add this one to the balance to the account too, with Alice. Make sure the ID is equal to 3 here, yeah? You see, the ID is equal to 3, that means I need just to update this one corresponding value to the ID. Or, you can say name equal else. Okay? When you try to perform this operation, I'm going to show you what's going to happen here. I said, run this one. And it's going to say everything is fine, permit. If you try to execute the same, just I want to check the content of that count. You see that this one, uh, more $1,000, and Bob is going to be less than $1,000. And that's, I mean, the uh, transaction. Generally speaking, when you, someone has said, but sometimes when you are typing my transaction or query, I figure out to find out the result, uh, it's gonna be executed to the disk. Yes, it's gonna be permanent. Automatically, by default, when you write your query, it looks like, by default, it's gonna be like, commit. Unless you state at the beginning, don't commit until I set. Okay, so whatever SQL query right now we type is automatically going to be committed to the disk. It's going to be permanent. Okay, unless you put this one begin transaction. When you say begin, the system say, I'll wait until waiting until you tell me they're going to commit or go back. Okay, hopefully so far so good. So this is the transaction, and after the transaction, we are going to take a look to integrity constraint. Yeah.